Welcome to my fiber journey. This is Twisted Dye Kitchen and my name is Sherry. I'm located here in Kirkwood, Missouri. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. As I mentioned, this is episode three. I can't get over it. This fall day is kind of gray and chilly. Perfect for a podcast. We just got back from Acadia National Park in Maine. Went for the fall foliage. It was absolutely stunning. Just gorgeous. Very chilly. Had some cool days in the 60s. Very, very blustery winds. Just about took us off our feet on a couple of occasions. But we had a great time. Saw a lot of beautiful landscape natural parks. Just love them. So I wanted to begin by thanking everyone for their wonderful comments. Thank you for sharing the episodes to your friends. If you can subscribe, I'd appreciate it very much and share the joy that we have here, whether it's with rug hooking, spinning and knitting and I also have another path I think I've gone down which I'll talk about after knitting hopefully you'll be able to stick around a little bit longer than normal looking forward to sharing our journeys and sharing some of the newest items that I have we'll go ahead and begin with our rug hooking okay we're on to our rug hooking so excited my 30 by 72 inch haul runner is off the frame. I have a naked frame. Shh, don't tell anybody. My Chetty Camp hasn't gotten anything new on it yet, but it's in the works. So I'm going to try to show you this rug and talk to you a little bit about how I'm going to be finishing it. Um, for you new rug hookers or existing rug hookers, you know what this is all about. But here is the bottom portion, which you were just able to see. Let's see if I can do this without knocking off the camera. Bear with me a second, please. So this is the bottom. It has all the finishing touches that I wanted to add. Um, when you're designing, sometimes it's a good thing to design as you go, but with this one, I needed to make sure that I incorporated the colors that were throughout the top of the rug or the beginning or the end of the rug. But <clears throat> what I'm going to talk a little bit about now is how I'm planning on finishing it. So I'm going to put this on my lap. And my, the process that we have is you'll take your sewing machine and with your zipper foot, you'll place your zipper foot up against this edge right here, okay? All up against this edge. And you'll do either a running stitch or you'll do a zigzag stitch. And since this backing is linen, you're going to need to stop the frame. So go all the way around with your stitching. Sorry for the construction noises. And you'll go around, doesn't matter what color, doesn't matter if it's cotton, whatever you have. And then that keeps it. Then you'll go ahead and trim. You'll trim about an inch, maybe up to an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, depending upon how wide you want this edge to be. And then I roll the edge toward the um, pulled fiber. And then that way it's flat on the back. And then I go ahead and I whip stitch with rug hooking yarn. And I placed my order. Let's see if I can find it. Excuse me. There we go. 
I placed my order with Halicon. And believe it or not, they're in Maine. I could have gone there, picked it up, saved myself some shipping. That would have been fun. But I went ahead and got this particular um, yarn. I don't know if you can see that. It's just black. And it's 100% wool. But it's specifically for, it's called the Deco Rug Wool. And it's meant for rug hooking. So I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if it'll focus in on that. You're just going to have to trust me on that one. Um, so that I have enough to do. I think I'm going to go ahead and do two, th two yarns per stitch as opposed to a single yarn per stitch. Oh, since it's going to be in my hallway, I know it's going to have a lot of traffic. So I want to make sure that that edging stays nice and taunt and wears well so that's what i have i have another design for um i want to say a 50 by 50 or maybe even a 60 by 50 um rug pattern that i have in my head i have my black and white drawing so that'll probably be on my shetty camp but the problem is is my um, Shetty Camp does not have the boards that are going to be wide enough, so I'm going to have to create new boards, create the, um, place the canvas on it to stitch it down, and then I'll have to get the gears to be put on that as well so that I can use that um, and expand this Shetty Camp tape. see this I'm pulling <clears throat> excuse me the fibers out so that I can have something to grab onto so I'm going to get my leader I'm using my knees just to hold it for positioning and then I'm going to attach the fibers that are up here and I'm going to grab on to the existing wrong way. Sometimes getting started is tricky. So you're ready to grab on. And there we go. It's ready. And then you just go ahead and pull and spin directly from the comb. I'm going to position the comb tines below me. And then you just draft. Now that's a little bit better for you to see. How's that? And that's how I spin from the comb. Can you see that? Concentrate on the fibers and your hand and reach out to other fibers that are close to the end. And when you get into a trouble area, just kind of stop a little bit and then grab the fibers that are close by. Okay. So I'm going to turn you around and I'm going to show you my plying that I'm starting with right now on the Lendrum. It's the first time I've actually plied on the Lendrum, so I'm pretty excited about that. So I have so I have the Lendrum set up with the ply bobbin, the motherboard, and the flyer 
all set up and I'm actually enjoying how it's plying up. Um, I've struggled with plying before in the past, but I actually really like how this is performing. I'm pretty excited about it. I think um, I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit more twist to this yarn, but it's actually coming out very successful. I'm, I'm thrilled. Okay, so now on to the knitting portion. So you remember how I told you that I was knitting on my red sweater for the Cardinals? And in support of the Cardinals, well, you know what, if you're a baseball player, fan you'll know what happened to the Cardinals for the playoffs and the World Series we didn't make it bummer but another bummer for my sweater I've learned that I don't do well with knitting from the bottom up I'm not that all of an experienced knitter so yeah my beautiful red sweater will be frogged very soon, probably after the holidays, because I've got a lot of knitting to do um, for gifts. So, yeah, do you think this neckline is a little too big? Yeah, me too. And I don't have enough of the yarn in order to rip the neckline out and add more. So, hello, frogging. This one's going to go bye-bye. I think I already picked another pattern that I think will work well for this um, worsted um, Malbriga yarn. I think it was called the Rios. Um, but I am on to um, a Christmas knit for my son. It's a West knit um, Virtus Unite. I love this pattern. Um, again, as I had mentioned, I use Zeobol's yarns, and I have all the Zeobol's yarn for this shawl. So it's a very graphic, very um, triangular shawl if you're familiar with this pattern. Um, I think I have two more sections to go, but here are all the colors that I chose for this and all of these are Zia Wools. So it's Z-I-A-W-O-O-L-Z. So here is all the yarns in addition to the one that got away which is right here excuse me which is here um i love all these colors my son loves bright colors he loves different colors um so that's a christmas gift and i'm pretty far along i'll be getting to the next section very soon but I don't know and I'm sure you all do this too um, as I mentioned I'm not that experienced but I did this little cheat sheet which I'm so glad I did um, so that I knew which color I was going to go to next so for instance the blue turquoise color was A and then B, C, D all the way down to the bottom which is where I am now but that way I could get an idea of will these colors play well together for this. And I'm so glad I did this a while ago because when I picked it back up um, from our trip, I was like, oh, what's going to be next? So thank goodness I had my little cheat sheet so that I can reference it for the next few colors. Shout out to my friend Doug from Zia Wool Podcast. Hi, Doug. Wait till you see my next path. I'm back again. So you remember that additional path that I told you I went down? <laughs> well, I've been 
experimenting with drawing, pencil drawing, um, sketching, um, primarily with nature, different items, just kind of playing around to see architectural buildings or stick with nature, go with birds, however. So then I found Urban Sketchers. That's pretty much what I figured I was going to go down the path of an Urban Sketcher. You can start with pencils, just your number two pencil. You can then go into um, markers, the micro markers. Um, I also have, so you can work with your pencils. You can work with the micro markers, um, which I've had and I still use. But I started to collect, and I don't want to say collect in a term of um, collecting very expensive fountain pens because I'm just kind of going down this path to see if this is a path that I want to further explore. So I have, um, for my birthday, I treated myself to a Lamy fountain pen, which I do like the feel of this. I also have, um, and, and I don't, it, um, Kue Kuno, K-A-K-U-N-O, and I know I'm not saying that correctly. And then I have um, a Keku. But the purpose of the water fountains, or the, the um, fountain pens, was primarily to do my outlining and to give more um, contrast, um, an outline to my drawings. I wanted to sketch with water. Um, excuse me, I keep saying water. Um, I wanted to use my fountain pens primarily as opposed to the markers. And I liked the fineness of it. I liked the feel of the fountain pen. I liked the feel of it on the, on the paper. And the reason why I keep saying water is because I want to use and incorporate that into my water coloring. And you're saying, well, Sherry, why are you going down these paths that take you away from your fiber? Well, it helps me explore color. It helps me explore details, styling, how to incorporate the pen, the fountain pen, the watercolors, um, all to help fine tune the love that I have for fiber in my rugs, in my knitting, and in my spinning. Can't take these when you're out in a national park. Can't take the rug hooking, you can't take your knitting. You could, but the way we go up and down trails and climb rocks, I don't want to lose my knitting. So my husband bought me for my birthday, which was the end of September, an orange, <laughs> kind of a nylon backpack. And in that backpack, I had just like a Tupperware container that had my fountain pens in it, it had sketchbooks, it had my pencils, um, and it had a few of the water color pen, um, yellow. My watercolor, what am I trying to think of? The paint brushes. Um, so when he would be off shooting some rock formation or the beautiful landscape that we have, I would sit and I just started to draw and I just started to play. I'm nowhere near a lot of these urban sketchers and how they are, but when you start to follow them, and follow their drawings, you can use that knowledge that you're gaining from these little um, pictures through Instagram and or the YouTube channels that they have and incorporate some of your 
thoughts into your drawings. It's all a skill. Your hand, your eye, hand and eye coordination. Um, the more you play with your pens, the more you play with your pencils, um, you're training your hand to bring your brain and your heart together. So it's an, an emotional picture of a moment in time. And I like that. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but here's a little play of a covered bridge. My husband and I, we had so much fun trying to find these bridges in Maine. They're all covered bridges from the late 1800s. So um, I documented the, the bridge. This one's called the Bennett Bridge. And I documented it on 10-15-2020. Remember how I talked to you about journals? Well, here's another different type of a journal. Here's another one that's a different structural type bridge. And I was just trying to play with the light source, the shadowing, um, just sketching. And this one was in Andover, Maine. It was called the Lovejoy Bridge. And that was on in October as well. I didn't put the date. This one I thought was kind of cool because I brought in a tree trunk, which I hadn't done that before. And it was neat because your eye gets trained to look to see how the construction of these buildings are. <clears throat> this one was on Frog Alley, which I thought was hysterical. I had to write that down. It's called Hemlock Covered Bridge in Freiburg, Massachusetts. And it was erected in 1857. So <clears throat> I just had fun with capturing some of our trip in a drawing. Um, I also did some drawings in this beautiful part of um, one of the, in Arcadia, I keep calling it Arcadia, Acadia National Park. And it had this beautiful section that was the, almost like a wildflower area. And I captured the building there and just fell in love with the, the architect of the building, the structure of the building, and then taking the boardwalk through this nature reserve. It was just spectacular. But these are the things that make your trips more meaningful. Um, at least for me, they were. I enjoyed the taking the time for me to explore a different path. And the path that helps me understand and remember a trip a little bit better. And that's part of the reason why I was so tired when I did get home. Because, or back to the... Um, hotels because you're so submerged mentally, physically, and emotionally to these places that you're visiting that you're exhausted by the time you get back. So this concludes another little path. Whether it's going to be in every video, I don't know yet. I don't know how much I'm going to practice what I preach as far as putting a pen to paper. But I do know that I am going to try to practice more of my sketching, force myself to get out into my backyard, um, into my kitchen to see what I can draw, practicing getting my hand ready for the pen to paper. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I had fun sitting here chatting with you and hoping that this and brought some pleasure to your day. I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. I know we're not going anywhere, so I'm going to hopefully have some more content for you and enjoy everything that you have. Until we see each other again, enjoy. Before we end this podcast, 
I wanted to send a special shout out to my friend Joyce from Ruby Moss Cottage. She is such a dear friend of mine. We've, thank goodness for the internet, thank goodness for Instagram. We became great friends. We got to meet each other last year, as I mentioned. Well, this year we decided that we were going to have handmade birthday gifts. So we decided that we were going to surprise the other person with what we feel that they would want. Joyce made me my beautiful, I think I'm saying this right, Marma. She and other podcasters were fortunate to go to Pat, Patricia's um, nitography and visit her in Norway. And they made these in Norway. And I saw hers and I just fell in love with it. Obviously, she knows me pretty well because it has a lot of orange and it has orange um, fabric all the way around. But I love this because it rolls up. And she had all these wonderful little treasures inside. I have to give her a penny for each pointy thing, though. That's what my mother said. But it, a little sewing kit, little travel kit for you. Um, she gave me some little stitch markers. I actually put in a little notebook for me. That's her Ruby Moss Cottage pin. And then she did some embellishment to a little deer. Isn't that sweet? That little guy is in my backyard. Herds of them eating my pastas, but this, this one doesn't eat anything. He just looks cute. So thank you so much, Joyce. I love it. I've already filled with some more items from, from my house. Yours is coming. It's going to be there next week. Thank you, everybody, for following me. Thank you for my opportunity to provide some of my love and my passion for some of the fibery, playful crafting that I do. I hope you enjoyed this podcast, episode three. I hope that I can continue to do more if you appreciate it. Please hit the subscribe button. Let me know if there's anything that you'd like to see a little bit more. And until then, enjoy.